there's a way to make an entrance. <laughs> My destiny. It was now a conspiracy of witches. Download Veely today. Around the world, a new breed of holiday destination is on the rise. Having a great time in Mahama! Huge hotel complexes built to satisfy every possible desire. As long as it's not illegal or immoral, your butlers will take care of it for you. Whether you're a happy family or a high-stakes gambler. This is $2 million. A mega resort wants to sell you the holiday of a lifetime. I love the way they smell. <laughs> With exclusive behind-the-scenes access to one of the world's biggest and best, we'll see what it takes to create five-star luxury on an epic scale. We're going to go through 60,000, 4,000 a year. The remarkable technology. There's another drink. Voila! <laughs> Monster machinery. One of these killer plants costs about $480,000. And we have seven of them. And thousands of people working 24 7 every week of the year. I like it when it's busy. Busy means business. <laughs> these are the secrets of the mega resort. The Bahamas, a chain of 700 tropical islands off the coast of Florida. It's a dream destination for many and a key player in the 7.1 trillion pound worldwide tourism industry. But with people willing to cross the globe for a holiday, the competition has never been greater. So resorts here and everywhere are upping their game by getting bigger much bigger. Welcome to Baja Mar, a mega resort that opened in 2017. It covers a thousand acres and cost 3.4 billion pounds to build. Here we are at Baja Mar, getting ready to go out to the pool for the day. Here are my little friends in the koi pond. But what exactly is a mega resort? It's a five-star holiday park for around 7,000 guests. Everything is deliberately designed so that as soon as they arrive, they never have to leave. Fancy a bite? Try one of the 40 restaurants and bars. Want to take a swim? There are 11 different pools or just relax on the 2,000 deck chairs along the beach. Are the kids feeling bored? How about a trip to the resort's private wildlife park? That is her way of saying welcome to the sanctuary. And welcome to the Bahamas. And when the kids have gone to bed, the adults can spend their hard-earned money in the biggest casino in the Caribbean. Five or fifteen. Mama got six or sixteen. I would. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> of course, all those people need a place to stay. So there's a cityscape of hotel tower blocks with 2,300 rooms. At the top of the luxury scale is the Rosewood where the lobby is filled with a specially designed fragrance meant to make everyone feel at ease. Two bedroom suites here cost more than £3,000 a night. This is our Rosewood suite. This is one of our signature suites. It has a private terrace with a jacuzzi and an ocean view. And every suite in this hotel has its own butler. We have our state-of-the-art kitchen and entrance for the butler service as well in the back. We want to be refined yet not pretentious at all, so we can create that relationship with, with all of our guests. I think in that way we can create memories that will last forever. To keep this machine running around the clock, it takes an army of 5,000 staff. 
They have their own city within a city. Centred on a 500 metre long corridor running through the resort's lower level, called the I-95. Nicknamed after America's main East Coast highway, it's how anything and everything moves from A to B, unseen by guests. This is a giant backstage world of storerooms and workshops, kitchens and canteens. It's also where thousands of employees begin their day. To make sure they're all at work on time, the resort has its own bus fleet. Around the clock, rain or shine, they ferry staff in from across the island. The biggest team starting work each morning are the 210 Grand Hyatt housekeepers. We have 1,457 rooms occupied today. We clean a lot of rooms. Good morning, everyone. It's a Herculean task, and manager Kendrick relies on some special inspiration to get the job done. One, two, three. Fill my cup and let it One day I was preparing the pre shift exam, and we had over a thousand and something rooms being departed. So right there and then I was like, oh my God, these people are going to die uh, because it's a lot of work. And I was trying to figure out what I can do to kind of build up the morale, um, make the day go smoother. And it just came to mind to do a song. And they loved it, so I just run with it ever since because it gave them a boost of energy. Before they go upstairs, each housekeeper receives room assignments via touchscreen. Armed with the Hotel Service Optimization System, or Hot Sauce for short. Once they log into the Hot Sauce device, the rooms that we assign in the morning, it will go directly to them. With a touch screen in their pockets and a song in their hearts, the team fan out across the two curving towers. As guests leave their rooms for breakfast on the terrace or a day at the pool, their housekeepers discreetly slip in. The ladies have a section where they are responsible for a certain amount of rooms. And any given day, we're not sure exactly how bad the room is going to be or how good the room is going to be and it could possibly be seven really dirty rooms. The whole cleaning routine is designed for maximum efficiency, right down to the sheets. Every room has six separate sets, constantly moving between the off-site laundry, store cupboards hidden on each floor, and the beds, more than 10,000 sets in total. Most guests are blissfully unaware of all this hard work as they amuse themselves with everything from shopping to water sports. And for those who really want to push the boat out, there's even a private island for hire. There is Bahamar. And here is what they set up for us on the private Long Cay Beach. Wow. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> By 3 p.m., 500 new guests start to arrive for their own dream holidays. Housekeeping. But no one can set foot in their rooms without Kendrick's seal of approval. The only thing that a guest call their own when they're at the hotel is my room. They don't go to the front desk and say, this is my front desk. They don't go to a restaurant and say, this is my restaurant. But they do say, my room. So we wanted to make sure that experience for them feels genuine, it feels authentic. They get that feeling that it belongs to them and them only. One room down, 
1,456 to go. And that's just one of the three hotels on site. Next, the security team sniff out trouble. Good boy. Good boy. The party gets going at the adults only pool. And mega rich gamblers get a taste of the ultimate mega resort lifestyle. Welcome to the presidential suite. The Baja Mar Mega Resort, a 2,300 room hotel complex in the Bahamas. This is one of a fast growing breed of five star holiday destinations, targeting a global audience. Attracting travelers from around the world means providing world class service on an unparalleled scale. A golf course designed by the legendary Jack Nicholas. A convention center that doubles as the country's biggest art gallery, with a grand ballroom big enough to host basketball tournaments. And behind the real tropical beach, there's a pool laid out as a fantasy tropical paradise, with cliff jumps, waterfalls, and an aquarium full of Caribbean wildlife. Working on this kind of scale means no one is ever denied their place in the sun, whether they're here for a relaxing break or a 24-hour party. This is Privilege Pool. This is the adult pool at Baja Mar. It's kind of like a nightclub, but during the day with well, a few less clothes. <laughs> The centerpiece of an afternoon at Privilege are the champagne guns, when a team of hostesses spray down the crowd with six magnums of ice-cold bubbly. I'm really big on making sure that we give that ultimate experience to the person that's spending $300 at a chair to someone that is spending $10,000 at a villa. Just for the privilege of sitting poolside here, clubbers must run up a sizable tab on food and drink. Day beds will range 500 to 800, depending on the size of bed you're looking to get. These pergolas are around $2,000 food and beverage, and then the Grand Cabanas are 3,500. You have the five lounge chairs on the outside, private bathroom, a kitchen, a living room, flat screen TV, you have everything in there. For those seeking the ultimate luxury experience, the Mega Resort is here to help. Guests can be chauffeured around the island in the resort's own fleet of high-end cars. These include four Tesla Model S's, or for extra special visitors, a Bentley Bentayga. Or how about a VIP stay in the reserve a secluded hotel within a hotel, with a separate private entrance. Welcome, ma'am. It's so nice to have you with us. Let me get the door for you. The man who tends to reserve guests every need is head butler, Vincent Saunders. Once you book a suite here at the reserve, you automatically get 24-hour butler service. Whatever they need, they give us a call and we'll take care of it for them. You know, anything that you want, as long as it's not illegal or immoral, your butlers will take care of it for you. We have cookies and chocolates. We have a chef on property that bakes these fresh every day for the reserve. Would you like to try one? It's very nice. I've eaten a lot of them, just look at me. So you should try one. From the private lounge, VIPs take a bank of private lifts to the top eight floors of the curving East Tower. The smallest room here is a one-bed suite. The largest is the presidential suite. Fun fact before we go in, the first guest to stay in the suite is Sir Richard Branson. So it's my favorite, and you'll see why. Welcome 
to the presidential suite. This one hotel room is more than four times the size of the average British house. It's just over 4,000 square foot. We have seven balconies all overlooking the beautiful turquoise Bahamian water. It's just an amazing room. Over here, we have the media room. A lot of families, they come in and they put the kids in the media room and they have their privacy. They close this up and they forget about their kids. We have three bedrooms spread out over two floors. Each of them comes with its own ensuite. And here we have a Roman tub for any romantic encounters that the butlers may have in store for their guests. One of the many surprises the presidential suite has in store is that it's not available to book, ever. You would have to be an invited guest of the casino to stay here. You can call up, it is not on the website. It's exclusively for our high-end casino clients. And most surprising of all, many of those invited to stay here are given this suite for free. Welcome to the world of the high rollers. Ultra-rich gamblers who are willing to bet millions in a single night. The resort wants them to wager it here, the largest casino in the Caribbean. More than 9,000 square meters of gambling with 120 tables Yo, for dice, cards, 18. or roulette. and 1,100 slot machines. The job of luring these coveted players to the Bahamas falls to a team of casino hosts like Keith Miller. He has a jaw-dropping array of perks at his disposal. It goes all the way up to sending our private jet. Wherever you are, we can come and pick you up. For arranging a trip on our 215-foot yacht, I can assist with that. The range is incredible, and I just try my best to make sure that people are happy. In return, Keith asks his clients to do just one simple thing, gamble vast sums of money. And he doesn't even mind if they win. And it's fun to win. A lot of people win, and I've seen huge smiles walking out of here with a lot of, a lot of cash. <laughs> That cash mostly changes hands in a special private casino. These are our private gaming salons that we have for our ultra VIP clients. This is a standard gaming room set up with a regular blackjack table, but we can change it out to baccarat, craps table, roulette wheel, whatever you want in here, we can facilitate. This is for our highest tier of gamer. It's not just everybody can come in here, it's, it's meant to be exclusive, and normally that comes with a certain price point. And can you explain what the price point is? VIP. <laughs> Very VIP. High rollers have been known to wager hundreds of thousands of pounds on a single hand of cards. And the casino helps facilitate these huge bets with extra high-value gambling chips some of which come with their own security escort. These are $100,000 chips. And there's a stack of it, just $2 million. It's just chips to me. It's the same as the regular $1 chips. If you actually think in terms of money, you're gonna freak yourself out. So I just also just keep in mind, it's just a chip. Hosting high rollers can seriously boost business. But there's another way the casino is upping its game. Bahamas billionaire Hong Kong-based owners have made a fortune serving Chinese gamblers around the world. Now they want to lure them here. So they've added certain subtle touches. Red carpets woven with Chinese good luck symbols. Artwork in the shape of an eight, a Chinese lucky number. And a Chinese restaurant with a doubly lucky 88 seats, 
and 88 dishes on the menu. There's even a fountain that catches fire, meant to create better feng shui for gambling. It's all part of a bigger strategy to tempt people into having a flutter. Let's go. Seven or 11. Let's go, Nessa. This giant room sits at the very heart of the resort, operating 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. And almost everyone will pass through it several times every day. In fact, the entire property is designed so that all roads lead to the casino. The vast array of games means no one is denied a chance to win or lose. We won all kinds of money. <laughs> it's my first game and I did better than I thought I would. <laughs> With so much money floating around, the casino needs a sophisticated security system to protect it all. Watching every table from several different angles is a vast CCTV network known as the eye in the sky. The exact number and position of the cameras is a closely guarded secret. They're there to observe and to help to ensure the integrity of the games as well. But um, other than that, we can't disclose too much of what they're doing. But know that they're there to protect us and to look out for us all. And it's not just the casino that needs security. Between the high-end boutiques, the VIP clients, the expensive cars, and the sheer number of people milling around, the whole resort needs top quality protection. The biggest thing that we do and the thing that we worry about is really the guest experience. When people come to the Bahamas, they don't want to think about security. When you go on vacation or holiday, you don't want to think about, is the place secure? Normal people don't have that in their head. So our job is to make the place feel secure, but also not feel like you walked into Fort Knox. But subtle as it may be, security here is serious business. So serious, the resort employs an unusual team of specialists that few hotels can manage. Five sniffer dogs trained to look for either drugs or explosives. Anytime a dignitary or someone from government comes, we have our dogs sweep the areas that they're going to be in to make sure that we don't have any trouble. And then our narcotics dogs, obviously, narcotics. <laughs> the newest recruit is Teo, a two-year-old golden retriever. Hey, boy, what's this? You're working every day with a best friend. That's how it feels. And he's a happy dog. We have the same personality, and he just brightens my day. I'm brightening every, the day of everybody around him. Next, the animal antics continue at the wildlife park. <laughs> Guests splash out on a close encounter. And the mega resort stocks up on a few essentials. We go through approximately 500,000 paper towels in a month. Kind of crazy. Being a five-star mega resort means offering things that no other holiday destination can match. Of course, there's swimming, sports, 24-hour-a-day gambling, and dozens of places to eat. On top of all that, this resort has something fairly unusual. Its own animal collection for guests to enjoy. From 44 tropical birds that will feed from your hand, to a school of sharks that could easily take off a finger. But the stars of the animal show are without question, the flamingos on parade. It's definitely what makes us unique, for sure. These four flamingos were all born right here at the mega resort. Over the last year, Chief Flamingo Officer Stacy Spurlock and her team have been hand-rearing them. Whenever you're raising long-legged birds, it's very important through that developmental stage that you exercise them. 
Now they see humans as part of the flock. As you can see, they're not following, they're leading. Welcome to our flamingo parade. How awesome is this? These are the Caribbean flamingos. They are the national bird of the Bahamas. This is my first real vacation, um, and I get to spend it with some flamingos, and they're beautiful. Back at the resort's specially built habitat, there are another 18 birds on display 24-7, always ready for a quick selfie. But because the four roving flamingo ambassadors might possibly follow a guest to the pool, they live out of public view in a special enclosure. I love the way they smell. <laughs> it's a very powdery, fishy smell, um, and it, it's just a comfort to me, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah. I know, you're like, that's not a, that's not a good smell, Stacy. You're weird. You're weird. I am weird. Hey, my baby girl. When I'm having a, a rough chief flamingo officer day, doing all paperwork and all the other managerial stuff, and I need some little bit of therapy, I just come right out here and play with my girl. Get some loving. I don't love you. No. That's what I think of you. <laughs> if you get pooped on by a flamingo, you might have some good luck there. But Stacy is not the only one who interacts with semi-wild animals on a daily basis. Guests can book their own close encounters with some scary-looking marine predators in the sanctuary, the resort's 662,000-litre aquarium. The residents include eight nurse sharks who swim around groups of carefully coached volunteers. 12 rays who will swim straight over their laps. And five green sea turtles, who always seem keen for a spot of lettuce. These encounters often include a chat with the resort's chief scientist, Vanessa Benjamin. You know, these are endangered, right? They eat jellyfish. And if you have a plastic bag floating in the water, it looks just like a jellyfish to them. And so they eat it, and so be careful where you dispose of your trash. Over at the touch tank, Vanessa has her own Bahamian cultural icon to show guests. OK. A giant sea snail called a conch. So here we have the mouth in the middle, the eyes on the end, and then this is the giant foot. This here is what we call an operculum that they use to crawl along and dig their way in the sand. And the chief scientist is running a real scientific study by collecting their poo. We would try to collect some to understand microplastics and conch and understand their diet and what they're eating because plastic pollution is a, is a major threat for our oceans in general. And so we're part of a Caribbean-wide study. To maintain this state-of-the-art facility, the resort employs a specialist team led by Dirk Westfall. They tackle a bewildering array of jobs, from cleaning the aquarium while the animals are still in it, to trimming stingray barbs like fingernails so guests don't get a nasty surprise. And behind the scenes, they manage a filtration plant that processes 2,400 litres of seawater a minute. These are our three foam fractionators, or protein skimmers. They take air and inject it into the salt water that's going through the filtration system. It's the same thing that you see in the ocean. When you see large amounts of foam on the beach, that's the organics that are in the water that are coming out. It's the same process. We use that natural process to clean our water. But where does all that seawater come from? Surprisingly, it's not from the sea, but from a salty well 250 meters below the island. This adds another layer of filtration as water seeps from the ocean through layers of rock and sand. 
it's pumped from here to the main aquarium. And also to four isolation tanks that serve as a quarantine area and on-site veterinary hospital. These are some of our new arrivals. Queen Angels here, which are the yellow and blue, and our two new puffers, which have a lot of personality. And we also have a yellow ray who came to us, and she has just recently given birth to little pups. Once they reach adulthood, we'll use them as animal ambassadors in our touch pool. This room also has another purpose, one that Dirk will hopefully never need to rely on. Every building on this campus has been built to withstand hurricanes. If there is a severe storm, uh, we'll bring the animals here so that they're safe. This room is solid concrete walls. There's probably very little that will actually blow through it. These provisions are necessary because in this part of the world, tropical storms are a fact of life. And even mega resorts are not immune to the weather. Between June and November each year, the staff stand ready for the worst. The hotel is prepared. We always prepare for hurricane. We actually have a, a hurricane storeroom. We try to get prepared, ready to go. First aid, batteries, flashlights, generators, pumps, ropes, anything to do with safety. Having a room stocked with emergency supplies is just one part of a grand plan. Every door and window is built to withstand winds of up to 180 miles per hour. The resort's ground floor is not actually on the ground. It's raised six meters in the air to prevent flooding. Accessed by a discreet network of bridges, escalators and stairways. And there's one final line of defense. Underneath the holidaymakers playing on the beach, there's a four and a half meter concrete retaining wall that stops the resort's foundations being washed away by a violent storm surge. If there was a hurricane, a hurricane was, was to come here, I wouldn't want to be on the top floors. <laughs> I'd want to be down low, lower. But, but other than that, I think the property is fully, fully uh, capable of handling a hurricane if we was to have one. Even when hurricanes aren't threatening the resort, there's a continuous stream of problems to tackle. From constantly keeping the paint fresh to daily equipment breakdowns. And because it's impossible to find specialist spares on a small tropical island, Sean keeps an Aladdin's cave of replacement parts, including one room with nothing but light bulbs. Uh, and basically everything is LED which means it lasts longer, burn less energy, and uh, <laughs> more expensive. <laughs> Do you know how many actual light bulbs there are in this whole property? No, I, I, I don't think I can give you a quite actual number, but I know it's millions. I think we're we, we, we in the millions of light bulbs on this property. And when one of those millions of bulbs burns out, Sean has to do his own recycling. This is machine is what you call a bulb eater. It actually eats the bulb. <laughs> it's ready to go. It's started up, and we drop it in. It, it actually, see, it's actually, see what's going on? It's actually pulling the bulb. So it pulls it in, and it's going. Quick as that. The vapors and the gases goes into a filtration system, and then the glass goes to the bottom here, and once it's filled, glasses used for recycling. <laughs> so how does a place like this get all the supplies it needs? It all starts with this man, Patrick Cluck. What is my job? Mine is basically I'm the one who decides when, how, and where we're going to be buying things from. And the logistics for everything you see coming in comes through my office as well. Three days a week, a ship docks here from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, with at least 10 shipping containers exclusively for Baja Mar. Oh, this is our lifeline. 98% of everything we buy for the resort comes in this way. If a container ship doesn't come in one day, we actually have enough to take care of that. If we went into a two-day or three-day where we have 
tropical storms and those kind of things and the vessels can't sail, you know, all of a sudden it, it has a very quick trickle down effect. It can be critical because all of a sudden the, the waiter's sitting there and he has to explain to a guest that he doesn't have the fish or he doesn't have the blueberries that she wanted to order. And then the guest sits there and says, well, why am I, why am I at Bahamar? This is supposed to be the best. Perishable items are driven straight to the resort and often served to guests that very night. But for goods with a longer shelf life, Patrick creates a vital buffer of backstock by squirreling them away in warehouses. Here, mostly what we have are things that turn over in a rapid pace. So in other words, things are in here, will stay here for maybe a week to two weeks. Otherwise, it's being sent over to the hotel for use. Um, right here actually is a shipment that we got in of water. Um, actually, it's come, it came straight over to us from, uh, from Europe, actually from Hampshire, England. So we have both the still and the sparkling. We bring this in solely for our Rosewood guest. Currently, we have 36 pallets, and there's 48 cases of water on every pallet. That's one month's supply for just the smallest of the resort's three hotels. And once it's all been drunk, there'll be quite a few trips to the loo. This is toilet paper, you know, things that are just, you just gotta have, right? You know, so nothing fancy. We have paper towels, some more paper towels. We go through approximately 500,000 paper towels in a month. Kind of crazy. Because almost nothing is available locally, every conceivable eventuality is covered. A five-star hotel room can never have a broken telly. So Patrick has 150 spares on hand, as well as 10,000 replacement pool towels. We're probably going to go through somewhere between 55 and 60,000 pool towels in a year. So it's quite a few pool towels. One warehouse contains nothing except spare hotel furniture and roll after roll of the specially commissioned casino carpet. But there's one thing Patrick never has to worry about storing for long. Food. From eight in the morning until seven at night, a constant stream of provisions flows from the loading dock to the 40 restaurants and bars. And from there, to the guests in one of the 15,000 meals prepared here every day. Next, drinks are served at the Mega Resort. One chef cooks up a five-star Mega meal. This is a 50-ounce Wagyu tomahawk. This is $265 on the menu right now. And thousands of staff get suited and booted. I like the cocktail dresses, because they're sexy. The cocktail dresses are sexy. I'm not a t-shirt kind of a girl. <laughs> like any self-respecting five-star destination, the 3.4 billion pound Baja Mar Mega Resort has plenty of luxury amenities. Like a spa with 24 treatment rooms. It's run by a British company and they brought in Dawn Holder from Rochdale to oversee it. Welcome to Espar. This is our Vita Jewel. In the centre in the vial is actual crystals. It infuses the water with vibrations. The remineralised water then enters your body and then it gives off the health benefits depending on the stone that's inside the vial. We have the happiness vial in here at the moment. We also have a lunar vial and we have a vitality vial also. But this being a mega resort, one spa isn't enough. Dawn has two spas, one upstairs for the guests and another downstairs, offering treatments for the staff. We offer from nail services to back, neck and shoulder massages to facials, and we even have barber services. Does it cost as much to go down there as it does to go up here? No. <laughs> 
it's very, very, very um, competitive. The employee spa is just one shop in a virtual high street below stairs. Staff rarely have the time to leave the resort for personal business. So the resort brings the business to them. But there's one thing that you won't find in many town centres. A laundry service on steroids. This is the uniform room. We have nine conveyors, A through I. Each conveyor holds 300 to 750 slots, and each slot holds anywhere from six garments to 12 garments, depending on how many pieces uh, that position holds. When our associates come to work in the morning, they bring their ID to one of the conveyor doors, where they'll swipe their badge, the conveyor will go around, and it will stop on their slot. It literally only takes you 30 seconds or so to get your uniform and get on your way. I love it. This way I don't have to do this at home. I come to work and it's all ready. And I'm off to change. Would you like to come? No? Okay. In total, the resort has more than 75,000 separate items of clothing in circulation. We've got about $4.7 million in inventory. Some of the more interesting uniforms, of course, is our cocktail uniform. Always a fun one. For Bridget, having improperly dressed employees is simply not an option. So the resort cleans their clothes for them, handling up to 3,000 pieces of laundry a day. All tracked around their system by electronic tags sewn into each garment. The laundry will collect the sold uniforms, take it to their laundry plant for processing. After 24 hours, the clean uniforms are delivered back to the uniform room. And it starts all over again. Add in sheets, towels and dressing gowns from two and a half thousand guest rooms, the laundry list runs into the tens of thousands of items every single day. We just received six racks from the laundry. Each Z-rack holds 80 garments, sometimes 79. <laughs> Someone was feeling a bit lazy and forgot to hang one. I like the cocktail dresses because they're sexy. The cocktail dresses are sexy. I'm not a t-shirt kind of a girl. <laughs> as soon as employees look the part, they're dispatched to their station. And every station has its own unique look. 275 different ones in all. From polo shirted beach attendants to a formal bar that's all about smoke and mirrors, literally. Making the smoke old fashioned using our Woodford Reserve bourbon. Right now, I'm gonna smoke the apple wood chips. So, we smoke the jar. Once this is done, I'm gonna pour the drink inside. That's how we get that smoke flavor. We do our own infusions here. Island Bliss, for example, we infuse it with watermelon and rosemary. And we also have another one called Crimson Pixie, which is tequila, infused with jalapeno. And then we have another one with mango and jalapeno. We have another one with uh, pineapple and cilantro. While Leslie is busy presenting a smooth service to his guests upstairs... Uh, there you have it, smoked old-fashioned. Executive chef Thomas Grease is downstairs, getting a feel for tonight's dinner. It looks like our order just came in from Chicago. This is great, the muscle's still tight. 15, 20 steaks per box three times. Uh, it's a lot of steaks, uh, upwards of the like probably a thousand plus. Most restaurants would order meat pre-cut into steaks. At the mega resort, that's just not good enough. They have to be cut right here in the specially built butcher shop by Thomas's hand-picked master butcher. This is our bandsaw where we do our fabrication on. And again, we're going to get about five, uh, five, six porterhouses out of this one. I'm going to let Joseph because this is his forte. 
Joseph is making sure that we're fabricating to the, the right spec. That's a top quality steak, better than anything else in the world. By the end of the night, this steak will be cooked, and hopefully somebody will be really happy. All this meat is destined for one restaurant, Kana, a steakhouse owned by Dario Cecchini, the world's most famous butcher. The special tonight is going to be your heirloom tomato salad uh, with California walnuts, a little bit of the gorgonzola dolce, um, the balsamic uh, caviar pearls, and we're finishing off with uh, some basil oil. Push the tomahawks tonight. Thomas is Dario's protégé, and it's fair to say he's obsessed with steak, even displaying it in the foyer like expensive jewelry. This is the butcher shop jewel case. This really displays a lot of the uh, heart and soul behind our meat program that we have here. Our baseline filet is an eight ounce beautiful Australian Wagyu. Cowboy cut, dry aged in Chicago. Uh, and a, a special uh, cooler that we have that's um, allocated just to Karna, to our specifications as far as how long we want to dry age it for, what percentage of humidity, um, and what temperature it's going to be controlled at. In the kitchen, chefs have been working since 7 a.m., preparing for the night's service. This is a 50-ounce Wagyu tomahawk, currently the biggest steak we have. It's three pounds of, of meat. This is $265 on the menu right now. Long before a single diner even sets foot in the restaurant, steaks go through an elaborate pre-cooking routine, overseen by Facundo, the restaurant's Argentinian grill master, working at a specially imported Argentinian grill. We do a two-folded process with our meats. We're smoking these right now wood smoke chips will give that rich flavor that we want, like a wood fire. We have this beautiful smoke and this herbaceous crust that's on the outside of them. Now we take these off and let them rest. We're gonna wait until our guests are saying, okay, we want our steak rare, medium rare, whatever it may be. We'll finish off in a high temp broiler, that kind of that New York City style char. Around 7 p.m., the orders start flowing in. A year ago today, we were on the other side of the property getting married. She decided to stick with me for a year, so I figured I'd kind of throw in a little bonus and uh, bring her to dinner, so. One thing that makes great food better is always service. And I think the service here is bar none. Let's get three bowls up in the window and we'll be ready to plate. Thomas has to get hundreds of gourmet dishes out the door which means orchestrating a scene of carefully controlled chaos. It's a lot like herding cats. I mean, you got you gotta, 100 cats running at you at once, you gotta make sure that they're, they're in an organized fashion. It's only now, with hungry guests tucking into their starters, that the steaks finally complete their long journey. Steak has came in, we've fabricated to our specifications, we've wood smoked it, we've cooked it to our desired temperature, and now we're looking to uh, serve it and, and eat it. And to go with the best steaks money can buy, Thomas offers some appropriately priced wine. Definitely one of my favorite reds, um, Screaming Eagle. Very limited production, high-end uh, mountain fruit. A really great bottle of wine, 5,000 for, uh, for the bottle itself. Next. The sun goes down, but the fun carries on. The night shift breaks out the elbow grease, and the mega resort feeds the 5,000. This is the best place at Bahama. This is where we come to eat. It's the end of the day at the mega resort and a well-worn routine is in progress. Attendants gather up 25,000 pool towels to be washed for tomorrow. And as the sun sets, the casino is gearing up for the big evening rush. Tonight, there'll be a lot of cash at stake, and it's critical that everyone plays fair and square, even the staff. 
so there are rules for everything. As dealer Valentino opens his table, manager Denise watches carefully to make sure he's not cheating. <laughs> and he has to watch her in return. Their first job is to bag up and destroy last night's cards, so no one can slip a spare ace up their sleeve. Every time we open up tables, we put a brand new set of cards on them. So the first process is to break the seal on the cards and take them out. Tables use up to eight decks at once to stop players guessing which card might come next. In total, the casino opens and discards around 750 decks daily. That's close to 15 million cards a year. Then, there's the money. When this table would have closed last night, $1,105,000 in chips were in, in this float. So when we open it the next day, we need to make sure that there's still the same amount of chips. At any one time, there's around 60 million pounds worth of casino chips in circulation. All backed by real cash to pay the winners. Good luck to everybody. In blackjack, it's each player against the house. But the staff aren't necessarily rooting for the casino. We don't tell them how to play, but if we see that they're doing something that they really shouldn't be doing, uh, we try to guide them in the right direction. There you go, blackjack. There you go. Well, very nice, very nice. Believe it or not, the dealers want the patrons to win because we collect it. So. The more they win, the more I get. <laughs> Tiffany! Tiffany's coming with me on holiday next time. <laughs> the house is in business to make money, but there has to be winners and losers. We were playing roulette earlier today. Lost a lot to roulette. <laughs> we're not good at anything, but we enjoy losing. <laughs> it's great watching people, listening to their interactions. It's, it's a fun experience. 21 guys. <laughs> Aside from gambling, casino patrons have one other major pastime, drinking. The busiest bar in the mega resort isn't a bar at all. It's the casino. And all their booze comes from the pump room, managed by Liz Cheney. This is our tequila wall. This is a favorite recently, the tequila that was founded by George Clooney and Randy Gerber. You have the group of guests that come in and they're more trendy and they want to find the new hip stuff and so we don't ever want to say no. Never saying no means Liz always has more than a thousand top grade bottles in stock. I'm not really sure how long it would take to empty all of this out but I would say two or three days because we place our orders constantly. These are destined for the bars upstairs, where skilled bartenders pour drinks and make cocktails with a flourish. But the vast majority of booze is dispensed directly from the pump room. Using this high-tech system that holds up to 240 bottles of alcohol at once. These are all connected to the one system. It's about 100 yards of tubing to get from here to the bars. At each bar, there are several guns that dispense up to 40 different drinks at the touch of a button. There's another drink. When you hear that little that means that they're popping the gun. <laughs> Voila! <laughs> Sitting between the bottles and the guns are 80 vacuum pumps, which allow precisely one shot of alcohol through with each press of the button. There are also touch screens, which can mix alcohol in any combination to make cocktails. If they want to come in and order a Bahama Mama, which is very popular on the island, they just hit the Bahama Mama button, and all of these work together. They talk to each other, and they go into the tubes, and they end up in the glass. <laughs> At the end of the day, happy guests. That's what it's all about. Beyond the casino, there are no less than 18 bars and night spots. 
10 of which stay open into the small hours. And naturally, a mega resort has to have its own nightclub. But as happy guests party the night away, a division of crack troops move into position. The 200 cleaners of the Public Areas Department. A separate squad is assigned to each of the resort's 32 kitchens, which must be washed down from floor to ceiling. The hardest job on the night shift, kitchen cleaning. It's a massive undertaking. We have to clean every kitchen every night because we're serving guests every night. Across the property, every square centimetre of public space must be scrubbed nightly, from the lobbies to the loos. And if people are still partying, the troops must simply manoeuvre around them. Even the most complex jobs, like cleaning the £192,000 casino chandelier have to be managed while gamblers are still at the tables. Four times a year, these specialists come in to clean it by hand. Each one of the 5,000 crystals must be polished one by one by one. It takes 10 nights to complete the job. Some things is best done with the hands old-fashioned elbow grease. Around 5 a.m., most of the resort is ready to go for the new day ahead. One of the last things to be cleaned is the beach, dredged at dawn by a special mechanical rake. And as the sun comes up, the day shift takes over. Over here, cleanliness is next to godliness, sir. For the sake of the wildlife, we have to clean the sand from the straws, debris, so it won't get actually into our beautiful waters to, you know, get in the turtle noses or, you know, the, so the animals wouldn't feed on them. So we have to do a whole process on this beach. The process finishes with arranging 2,000 deck chairs into perfect rows. By 9 a.m., another day of five-star luxury is well underway. That means, above all else, eating. No matter what kind of meal a guest is looking for, the mega resort aims to provide it. And everything has to have that extra twist. Morning coffee is served with digital phone printing. Lunch can be taken right on the beach from a food truck. But perhaps the most extraordinary restaurant here is not for guests at all. It's the staff canteen. Hello. Welcome to Cafe Blue. This is the best place at Bahama. This is where we come to eat. This is lunchtime. Seven days a week, from 6 a.m. to 2 a.m., a team of 47 people, led by head chef Shane Durrell, feeds every employee on site. I'm going to need an additional four pounds to go for that. Okay, chef. Okay. That makes this the single busiest kitchen on the property. This kitchen is very vital, you know, because you know we have a lot of hungry, hungry uh, associates. With so many mouths to feed, it's easy to think the fare here is little better than old school dinners. Well, think again. You'll have a salmon filet, beef short ribs, you'll have the mai mai filet, you'll have baby back ribs. Today, they have um, everything Bahamian. They have peas and rice, plantain, fish, crabs. I like the macaroni. It's really, really nice. How are you? Uh, Chandelier, one of our cooks. She did some guava duff for this evening's dinner. Guava is a fruit, and you, you take that fruit and you wrap it in a dough, you steam it, then you have a sauce that goes along with it. You can add rum to it, and it's awesome. Every day, Shane and his team dish up around 4,000 meals for free. 
because every employee is given a $10 lunch allowance. I get rice, I get ham, I get crab, I get all of this and dessert for $8. And if I'm really hungry, I can come back and use my other $2 later. That leaves Shane with a colossal grocery bill. Right now, we spend anywhere from $100,000 to $200,000 weekly on supplies to feed the staff. Next, it's tea off time at the mega resort. The staff try to beat the heat, and engineer Sean turns on the juice. Yeah, clack, clack, clack. In the Bahamas, temperatures regularly top 32 degrees. That's a big selling point for the mega resort, but it also creates a big problem how to keep 7,000 guests and the 5,000 staff who serve them cool. The solution is hidden at the back of the convention center, the biggest air conditioning plant in the country. These massive machines are so powerful, only three of them are usually needed. But even if they all broke down at once, no one would break a sweat because there are four others waiting on standby. One of these chiller plants costs about $480,000. And we have seven of them. That's almost $4 million. Although costly, the system works on an incredibly simple idea. It chills plain water, then shoots it around the resort through miles and miles of pipes. The water cools the buildings then comes back to the chillers once again. It's millions and millions of gallons of water that runs through the hotel, keep the hotel cool. Millions of gallons of water. And Sean keeps the whole system running smoothly by using a free, eco-friendly, natural coolant. Seawater pumped up from one of the many deep wells under the resort. Without the deep wells, the chillers cannot run. The cold water from the ground into the chiller cools the chiller, then it pumps it back out. After the salty water cools off the chiller plant, it gathers in lakes at the resort's golf course, where it's used to keep the greens green. The grass is a salt-tolerant variety that can be watered with a mixture of seawater and fresh tropical rain. That, in turn, frees up the groundskeepers to concentrate on other essential maintenance, like moving all 18 holes to new positions every single day. People love to play our golf course, right? And so we have a lot of repeat guests. And so if you play a couple of days in a row, uh, you know, sometimes it's more fun to play a different pin location. Even though the course is constantly changing, there are some hazards golfers must face every time. The course's designer, famous golfer Jack Nicklaus, dynamited this lakeshore to create a tricky approach. We're on hole number 16, our signature hole, par three, uh, our island green effect here with Lake Cunningham. It's really difficult to judge the distance here. Let's see, is this one to be one that goes in the lake or, and it is. That's probably the 10 to 12 uh, ball for the day in the water. But their loss is one mega resort chef's gain. It's just something fun to do on my days off. I love golfing, I like the outdoors. And when I golfed here the first couple of times, I saw all the golf balls going in the water. And I just thought it was a shame. This was only probably 10 minutes work. You can see there's a lot of different balls everybody's using, from the colored ones to, to the ones that look like little uh, footballs. So any opportunity I can get to get some balls. Another clever design feature of the golf course, it conceals a huge piece of vital infrastructure. The resort's own 15 megawatt power station. Incredibly, this is just a backup 
in case the main supply ever fails. If we were to lose power now and you in this room, you'll hear a big bang. Then all of a sudden, a couple minutes later, you hear clack, 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 which means the switches are turning over and we are generator power. So in the event that something happens, we always ready to go. Whether on mains or generator, the mega resort draws around nine megawatts of electricity. That's equivalent to more than 25,000 British homes. It's just another extraordinary system that keeps the mega resort humming 24 7. Monthly our electricity bill here is pretty high. It's a massive, massive number. It's huge. That's, 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 that's what I can say. It's huge. It's huge. Big, big number, you know? From the golf course greens to the white sand beach. From the wildlife to the wild parties. And from the luxury suites to the high stakes casino. This is an investment of billions. All meant to capture that elusive thing. Us and our hard earned holiday money. We want people to have a good time. We understand that island life is one to be enjoyed. We understand that life is to be enjoyed. We try our best to help people to do that as much as we can. Over the next year, Baja Mar will host close to one million guests. This one mega resort could soon make up 12% of the Bahamas' entire economy. And as big as it is, soon there'll be more. Right next door, a huge new water park is under construction, ready to open in 2021. This resort is about to get even more mega.